now. It's my absolute pleasure to welcome you to today's exhibit today. We've got a jam-packed agenda, and I'm going to welcome you, give you some of the show's updates, then I'm passing over to Hettel, who will talk you through all the marketing tools you have at your disposal via the My Easy Fares portal. Then, very pleased to welcome Stone Junction's Holly Patman and Alison Gardner, who will teach you or give you some hints and tips of how to speak to the press that will be attending the event. Then I'm going to hand over to Beth Kelly, who's our head of operations, that will give you all the insights into how you can manage your stand at the show and the process leading up to it. Finally, we'll have Mark Benoit, who will tell you about all the support we're going to give you on site via our sales team. But first, a little bit of housekeeping. So I really want today's webinar to be as interactive as possible. So it's really important you get involved. So please post all of your questions, as many as you can in the question tab, okay? And then we will respond directly to you, as many as possible throughout the webinar. But if we don't, we'll get in touch afterwards and, and uh, come back to you directly. Also, this webinar today is being recorded. And so you can access it anytime afterwards as well, or share it with colleagues. But first, I want to thank you for your support this year. And I can't believe it's just five weeks until we'll be welcoming you on site. And I'm very pleased to say, I personally think we have one of our best conference programs to date. Post COP, the whole theme is around that ambition to zero. And we will be bringing together the whole envi built environment on our industry stage. We've got three days of conference program. The first is looking at that ambition post COP26. The second is looking at that transformational change needed to drive the built environment to net zero. And then the last one is we're looking at healthy places and how we can build that net zero built environment. Massive thanks to our headline sponsor, the Construction Innovation Hub, and to the Edge as our steering group and feeding into this program. Content has always been at the heart of Future Build. And I'm pleased to say we have a three day seminar program looking at all the key themes resourceful materials, interiors, off site, critical infrastructure, energy, and buildings. We also have brand new spotlight areas, which offer more practical advice and workshops in whole house retrofit, digital impact, a future installer feature by MCS, district energy intelligent buildings and circular materials brought to you by 540 World. It's going to be a really great program. There's a lot of buzz at the moment about future build from the architectural house builder and developer communities. This is their first time that they can get together since we last ran almost 24 months ago. But my key objective for this year is to make the supply chain and you the stars of the show. So this year, We've tweaked our big innovation pitch concept to really put the showcase on those innovations propelling and driving the built environment to net zero. So I urge you all to enter. So, so far, we've got 55 entries, which is phenomenal. But you've got until this Friday to submit your innovation. Once you've submitted your innovation, it goes online in our innovation gallery. So check it out. And you can see what other people have submitted. We're, we've got two amazing judges, Dr. Oliver Jones at Ryder Architecture. And he's got a special um, guest as well, which you'll be able to see online. Um, we'll be shortlisting down to just six companies. And this will be announced the week of the 7th of February. Now, this shortlist of six companies get the amazing opportunity to pitch live at the show on our arena stage at day two to a packed audience of VIP invited architects, house builders, developers, consultants, and contractors. It's an amazing opportunity. And we will then be announcing the winner of the Big Innovation Pitch 2022 live on stage. So please submit your entry. This is your way that we can help you highlight your innovations you're bringing to the show. Now, that's it from me. So I urge you to ask as many questions throughout the show, as, throughout this webinar as possible. And it's my pleasure to hand over to Hetel Patel, who's now gonna give you all the marketing tools to make the show as successful as possible for yourself. Thank you.
Hi everyone, I'm Hetal. Um, I think I might have spoken to some of you already. If not, I'm sure we've exchanged um, some emails. Um, first off, I just wanted to thank you all for attending and introduce the marketing team. So um, there's myself, there's the brand director, Christine Williamson, and um, our marketing intern, Chloe Wonga, who, again, I think you've either spoken to or um, exchanged emails with. Um, so today I wanted to talk to you a little, about, a little bit about all the um, promotional tools that we have available that are free and part of your EasyGo package. Um, I'm also going to show you around the um, My Easy Fairs um, exhibitor portal um, and just show you how to use it. Some of you have seen this already, but it's a nice little reminder. So um, some of the exhibitor tools that we have are the personal invitations. Um, you can see uh, just you can see on your My Easy Fairs uh, an example of what this looks like. If you want one of these to send out to anybody, we can um, we can personalise it for you. So just let myself or Chloe know, and we'll make sure that that's done for you. You also have some generic banners that you can use on your email signature or on social media. And again, if you would like these personalised, just let us know, and we can do that for you as well. When using these banners and invitations please use your tracked link um, and that will help us um, help us see who's registering from um, you know promotion that you've pushed out because they're looking forward to seeing you at the show um, but also and I'll explain this a little bit later on my easy fairs you will be able to see who's registering using your link and you'll be able to get in touch with them before the show and, and arrange meetings with them. Um, also look out for a HTML email so we can put together a HTML email for you. We can either send it out for you or um, we can put it there so that you can send it out. Um, and finally, we've got some free promotion in our newsletter, which goes out every Friday to about 64,000 um, subscribers. Um, and every week we tend to um, put some promotions in there for exhibitors highlighting who's on board. I should have said before, um, I will answer all your questions um, at the end of my presentation. So we have an exhibitor competition as well. You would have seen some communication from us about it. Every week we'll send around a leaderboard in our communication. Um, so this is the exhibitor that registers the most amount of visitors will receive a case of champagne at the show. Um, and all the tools that I've been talking about um, just previously and that I'm gonna show you will help you get people to register for the show. Last year's win is there, the Concrete Center. The big innovation pitch, Martin um, touched on this a little bit earlier. So yes, the deadline was the 26th of um, January, but we've extended that to um, this Friday, which is the 28th. So please ensure that you submit your um, innovation to the Innovation Gallery via My Easy Fairs, which I'll show you. Um, and then, then um, Dr. Oliver Jones um, and his guest will judge all the submissions um, choose a short list, short list of six, which will be announced on the 9th of February. Um, the winner, as you can see there, you know, gets a number of different things, included some promotion from us, a seat on the judging panel for 2023, and most importantly, you'll be crowned as the big innovation pitch winner. So just before um, we go on to my easy fares and I show you a tutorial, I wanted to explain um, what Visit Connect and um, Smart Badges. So Visit Connect, you'll see it on um, your my easy fares. Depending on what easy fares package you have. Um, you will get a number of licenses. So Visit Connect is an app that you download onto your phone. Um, I believe that all the uh, barcodes or QR codes are already there. So you could do that now, but you could also wait in a couple of weeks and do it then. So this app is downloaded onto your phone and it just means that when you are speaking to a visitor at the show, you can scan their badge and all their information will automatically be collated here. Um, and at the end of the show, you then just download all this information. So there's no need for business cards or you know pen and paper, everything's collated here for you. 
The great thing about this app is that you can preset questions and you can make notes. So two weeks before the show, we recommend that you go online um, using a laptop or a desktop computer. And you, you know, if you wanted to make sure that all your sales team across the three days are asking specific questions or the, the same questions, you can um, put these on there for them so that when they download the app, they have all these questions ready. And then we have um, readers. Um, so these readers, for those of you that exhibited with us in 2020, you would have um, seen these readers around the show. Every exhibitor has one of these little readers on their stand. And again, depending on what package you are on, um, you can have a number of you can have either two readers or one reader and if you're an innovation partner you'll have a specific one for that as well and i can talk to you a bit more about that um offline if you like but these readers so um all visitors that come to the show are shown how to use their smart badge um, and they're shown on a reader and you know our hostesses will explain how to use it and touch their badge to make sure it's working so visitors can go around the show um, and if they're interested in your products or your company they can tap their badge onto the smart reader. Um, and then after the show, they'll get an email with all the exhibitors that they tap their badge on, um, and they will get information about your product or your company. And I'll show you how to link that information up in a little while. Um, this is great because it means that you don't have to produce lots of collateral to hand out at the show. And also visitors don't have to walk around with bags of um, paper. So I'm going to go on now to show you um, to show you how to go how to use my easy fares. Uh, I'm just having a look if there's any. Um, there won't be a scanner provided, so you can just download this onto your phone or tablet or any device, electronic device that you're going to be using um, at the show. So um, I hope you can all see my screen. This is um, my Easy Fares. I'm in our Future Build um, Easy Fares account. So once you log in, if you haven't already logged in, um, you will get a widget that pops up and asks you to complete your company information first. Once you've done that, you'll, you'll come to this screen here. Um, and on this screen, you'll see the package that you are on. You can also um, click view packages and see all the other packages, all the other EasyGo packages. Um, and if you wanted to upgrade to another package, um, you just need to speak to your um, account manager and they can do that for you. Or alternatively, speak to myself or Chloe and uh, we can put you in touch with somebody. Once you um, start to upload information here, you can click on online profile to see what that would look like. Um, for example, this is Adagrip. Um, so this is their company profile that they've uploaded and then the products that they've uploaded as well. They've also put some press release on there as news items. And then there's contact us form. So if somebody wants to contact you, they will fill out this form and you will get a message from them. So let me show you. Company information. So if you this person's already, well, we've already completed this, but if I go in, I can see this is my basic um, information. This is my basic information here. Um, and, oops, I'm just trying to come down a little bit. The contact email address that you have here is where any inquiries will go to. So just um, make sure that the contact person you've got there is the person that you, um, that is gonna respond to all these inquiries. Um, you put your company address, your company description, and the description is what will come up here. So this is the description here. Um, you can choose up to three categories. So this is if somebody's on our exhibitor list and they want to just look at companies in, you know, with um, you know, with products related to resourceful materials, they would they would select resourceful materials and you would show up because you have selected that as a category. So you can choose up to three, no more than three. You can upload your logo here and you can also add your social media. Um, 
So once the company information is done, you can add products. If you go into products and services here, um, you, uh, you can see that I've added two products here. So you can add as many products as you like. There's no um, limit to that. You can also add images. I think you can add documents as well. So there's a number, if I go into one, you can see. So you can put the name of the product here, add a picture, description, um, and then at the bottom, there's that URL, documents. Um, so there's a few other things that you can add. It doesn't just have to be um, an image. Once you've added all your products, you'll be able to see them on the exhibitor list and on your profile. So they're all here. Also, if you wanted to link your readers to specific products, so if you've got three readers on your stand and you want one reader to be about the company and then you want two readers to be about specific products, you have to make sure that that information um, is uploaded here because then you will have to link it, which I'll show you in a bit. So Innovations Gallery is um, just down here. So if you wanted to enter into the big innovation pitch, remember to add your um, innovation into the Innovation Gallery here. Also, the Innovation Gallery looks like this, and it is live on our website. So everybody that submits an innovation um, you know, will automatically be displayed here on the Innovations Gallery, but only, um, only six will be chosen to pitch um, on the arena stage for the big innovation pitch. Um, and then next here is news. So you can um, upload any news items, press releases. Um, and if you've got any vacancies, you can also publish a job ad and everything will come up um, over here on your profile. So once that's done, we can move on to the next section, inviting your clients and your prospects. So um, a few things here. So this box here is where you would get your invitation link. Um, all you need to do is copy that link and then use that whenever you're doing any promotion and letting people know that you're going to be at Future Build. Um, once you start using that link, people will register using that link. Um, and then you can start to see them here. So this will then have like a list of people that have registered using your link because they're interested in your promotion, your product, your company. And then your sales team can start contacting them and setting up meetings to have at the show. So a few things that we can do to help you, um, and I showed you some of these tools earlier, um, is things like the banners. So if you go into this marketing material section, um, we've put some generic banners here for you um, and some generic templates. And like I said, if you want anything personalized, please let us know um, and we can get that done for you. So you can use any of these things to um, promote your presence at the show. Um, we also have a telemarketing service. So if you wanted us to call your client list and invite them on your behalf, we can do that for you too. Um, and we have an email invitation service as well. So again, um, all you need to do is assign, um, have a look and sign the, um, the GDPR and then just upload maybe your logo if you want us to include that in the email um, and then your data. And then we would um, use that data to invite people to the show on your behalf. And then after the event, we will, um, you know, we, we will delete the data from our records so that we don't use them for anything else. Um, and remember, in addition to this, you've got the other promotions. Um, so you've got the newsletter as well. And if we post something in the newsletter, we also post it on social media. So you've got that additional promotion there as well. Um, and we'll make sure that we tag you in there. Manage your stand. So here, um, you register your stand personnel over here through this area. Um, a stand orders is what's already been ordered or included within your stand. So you can check that out on this section here. Create alerts. So you can create um, an alert. So if you have somebody registered um, through your tracked link, you can set up to be notified of when they enter the show. So once their badge is scanned to say they're at the show, you will get an alert 
a, a text message to let you know that um, you know Mark Ryan has entered the building. You can set up um, unlimited amount of alerts, but it's only for three phone numbers. So you can tap in your phone number um, and then select the person that you want to be alerted about. So we spoke about Visit Connect earlier. Visit Connect is here. Um, so you would just, if you go to um, access here, you will get a download and all your licenses are here and you just scan these. So who, you know, your individual sales team will just scan these and depending on what package you're on, you'll get um, a different number of licenses. That they should be enough for everybody for three days. Um, and also you can go into Visit Hopefully you can still see my screen. So you go into visit and you can um, go to profile questions and add your questions that you would like to um, ensure that everybody is asking. So I'm just going to come out of here. So readers um, here, smart badge technology. This is where you manage your readers. So I have um, as future build, we have two readers assigned to our stand um, and all I did is go into modify and from the products that I uploaded earlier I just chose which product I wanted to assign to a reader um, and all that means is when the visitor has scanned their bad onto that reader at the end of the day they will get an email with your company name um, and a link to the information that you've put here so if they scanned on this reader, they'll get information about our FutureX podcast. Um, and then finally, track your performance. So over here, um, after the show's finished, you can download your leads from your Smart Badge reader and from your Visit Connect app as well. Just on the Smart Badge reader, something I remember, if you're on a visibility package, you will have a reader on your stand because visitors will be walking around and you know you know they will still want the information but you won't be able to get the leads from that reader because of the package that you are on but you can upgrade your package so if you are on a leads plus or premium package you will get all the leads of the people that have touched their badge onto your um, reader on your stand um Another thing that I forgot to mention was that each exhibitor gets up to 50 VIP um, places for their clients. So if you wanted to use those places, you just need to let myself or Chloe know and send us your list um, and we will invite those um, people as VIPs on your behalf. Great, I'm gonna just unshare my screen and, and see if you've got any questions. Um, are the readers actually physically on your stand? Can we use them to scan visitors? Users? So, so I think I've covered that. Um, you don't have a physical um, scanner. What you do have is an app that you download on your phone and you use your phone to scan the, the smart badge. Yeah, you can, you do receive visitor information from the reader and it'll be exactly the same um, as Visit Connect. You would just download it um, through My Easy Fares. Should we scan visitors with the app and the reader? Um, you can do. So the reader is really there as um, a bit of a, you know, it, it's there in case, you know, somebody doesn't want to speak to you or there's nobody available for them to speak to. Um, or that you know they just want to know more about a product, so they'll scan their um, badge onto the reader. But the Visit Connect app is actually there for you to capture details and make notes on um, you know with somebody that you're actually speaking to. So you have these are like your hot leads. You're having a conversation with somebody and you're making notes today. This is what we've spoken about, so that after the show you um, you remember the conversation and you can um, follow up with them. Whereas the reader is really there for visitors who are walking around and just want more information, but it's an additional um, you know, lead capture tool for you. Um, I mean, it's provided a 
a standard. Yet we have hostesses that walk around the show floor. So they'll be on bill day. You'll see them walking around. They'll put your reader up there for you. Um, and they'll talk to you about your reader as well and the sales team. So they'll brief your sales team um, on what this reader is for and how to use it. Um, and then at the end of the show, we will collect them all up. Please, please, please ensure that they are not tucked away in a cupboard because if we can't find the reader, we can't get your leads for you at the end of the show. So it's really important. Um, and, and we will start collecting readers probably like from um, midday or, you know, a little bit later um, on the last day of the show. But just please look after them. Yeah, the new deadline for the big innovation pitch is midnight on Friday. Um, I think that's it. Yep, you can um, you can capture unlimited amount of leads on the smart badge. To only receive information about scan. Yep, so you'll only get leads from your um, reader if you're on a leads plus or premium package, not a visibility package. Yeah, you are allowed to give out flyers, but at your stand, not down the aisles um, or at the front door. Um, I think I've answered all the questions. If I haven't answered any of your questions, um, you know, we'll download all these questions after and I'll get in touch with you. Alternatively, you can always email myself or Chloe if you need some more information. Thank you. I'm going to pass you over to our PR team. Cool. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Alison. I'm from Stone Junction. We are FutureBuilt's PR team. Um, just wanted to cover a few things that I think you'd all find helpful before, during and after the show. Um, we're going to cover social media, speaking to journalists and media opportunities. Um, so firstly, using social at trade shows, I think um, this will really help with bringing people to your stand, um, talking to them and helping with those leads afterwards. Um, so do your research before the show to find people you'd like to meet if there's people you definitely like to come to the stand or invite to see see you at Future Build. I'd suggest connecting with them on LinkedIn um, before the before you go um, and send personalised collection requests in advance to make sure that they're, they're ready to see you. Um, and then once the company has visited your stand or any company has visited your stand and had a good chat, and make sure you mention the company in um, in any updates as an extra touch point. It just means that more people will see your posts. Um, then if someone gives you their business card or you've got a lead or any sort of contact details, don't forget to connect after the show. It's really important way to keep in contact and turn those leads into sales. Um, and then, of course, make sure you use any relevant hashtags for extra exposure. Um, some people will literally only be following the hashtag, so it's the best way for people to see you. Um, then, if a journalist visits your stand, so there'll be lots of journalists coming across um, from different trade titles, different areas, um, to visit, see what's happening, see what new innovations are out there. Um, so it's really important to speak to them and have everything you need ready for them. Um, most of these journalists will be writing their own post-show reviews um, where they're looking at the latest innovations that will be most interesting to their readers and they'll probably visit your stand for more information. Um, if so, brief everyone that's going to be on the stand throughout the three days on what to highlight on your stand, um, whether it's products, services, people, um, just things that are happening, make sure everybody's got it. Um, and I'd also make sure you've got an elevator pitch ready. So 30 seconds to a minute of explanation of what your company is about and why you're innovative. Um, the journalists will have busy schedules. So as soon as you spot one or someone says, oh, I'm from this title, greet them straight away and give them, 
uh, get chatting and um, they'll probably only have a few minutes to talk to you so the more you can get um, from that chat the better um, make sure that you have images uh, people to attribute quotes to available as soon as possible um, so that you can hand them out straight away everyone every journalist will want high resolution product shots logos headshots um, to go alongside any content so make sure that you've got those ahead of time um, and then give them a business card for any follow-up questions and uh, it might be an opportunity to contribute to something further in the future or just a way to get in, in with a journalist um, and then i just wanted to cover some of the promotional activity that we are working on with future build that we can get some exhibitors involved in um, and how you guys can promote yourselves ahead of the show um, so all exhibitors can submit a press release about new product launches. I believe Hessel and Chloe have been sending out surveys where you can submit your product launch press release. Um, this could also be a preview press release. So um, I'd make sure in any preview press release, you've got what you're exhibiting on the stand, um, including key benefits of any product service or anything that's on your stand, um, and also include your stand number. It's really important so that people can find you. Um, we'll be gathering those press releases, highlighting any new products to look out for for press. Um, and then, of course, uh, we can send those out. Um, innovation partners, I think some of them we've already been in contact with. So you may have already had an email from myself or my colleague Holly. Um, we're currently finalising an article on the trail um, and the innovation partners, which we're distributing to trade media. So this is a free media opportunity for any innovation partner. Um, to be included, uh, talking about what, what you're going to be showcasing. Um, if you are an innovation partner and you haven't heard from myself, please get in contact with um, Chloe or Hettel to get in contact with me and we'll be able to sort out for you. Um, then as Hettel, both Hettel and Martin mentioned, we've got the big innovation pitch. If you are shortlisted for or win the big innovation pitch, um, we'll be... Um, We'll be writing a shortlist press release and a final winner press release. Um, so you'll get a free media opportunity there to talk about um, what you've been what you've submitted to the innovation gallery. Um, and that's probably it from us. I think we'll be there throughout the show um, and we're also there in the lead up to the show. Um, I've put our phone number on here, but also um, Chloe and Hattel have our contact details um, so that you can get in touch with us with anything you need. Um, and to be honest, I think that's probably it. Um, if there's anything else, we can obviously help out. Um, and I think the only question I've seen that's PR related is who do we contact for pre-show press releases? So if you have anything written, um, I would submit it to the surveys that Hessel and Chloe have been sending out. Um, if there's anything else, if you need help writing them, I'd probably ask them to put you in contact with ourselves. Um, and we can give you advice on how to write a really good press release. Good afternoon. Um, I hope everyone can hear me. I am Beth Kelly. I'm head of operations at Easy Fares, and I'm going to run you through some of our operational detail for the show and we'll be taking questions at the end so if there isn't if there's something I haven't covered feel free to pop your question in the chat and then we'll answer it at the end of the presentation so a lot of this information I hope you've already seen in the exhibitor manual that's available online um, we're going to run through some health and safety information venue information the event timetable your stand package um, additional requirements and then a brief um, explanation of uh, my easy fares and the web shop so we'll start off with health and safety um, easy fares is working in partnership with SGS who are the world leading inspection verification testing and certification company and they will be working with us at the event to check over our health and safety the cleanliness of the event and all of the COVID things that we have in place and they will um, pass us at the event and give us accreditation, which will be posted onto our website, which is great for us. Um, we will continue to work um, with the venues 
um, and with a document called the All Secure Standards document, which means we will still be checking proof of COVID-19 status for the event. Um, this is actually done by Excel rather than us, and you will be asked to show either your COVID uh, vaccination pass, proof of a negative test, lateral flow or PCR, or proof of natural immunity. And you'll be asked to show this before you enter the building. So whether you are coming through the west entrance, the east entrance, um, through the car park, you'll be asked to show this for, from a member of the Excel security team. Um, whilst we won't legally need to enforce social distancing at the time, we will still ask people to kindly observe social distancing when moving around the halls, especially if you're in busy areas and ask that everybody is mindful of other people around you. We try to reduce contact as much as possible, and we do this by using um, smart badge technology. And also, if we do need to put plexiglass shields anywhere around the show for registration desks or information points, that's something that we will continue to do at our events. Um, there'll, be re there'll be hand sanitizers all around the venue for people to use, and exhibitors will all be given a hand sanitizer to have on their stand as well. You don't need to do anything. A member of my team will distrib distribute that to your stand um, on the last day of build on the Monday. Um, face coverings. Now, we will remain in line with current gui government guidance on masks. Um, we will have masks on site if anybody wants to take them. Um, and again, we can uh, give you some packs to have on your stand if you need them. They'll be at registration, but we will continue to be in line with the government guidance on wearing masks. Um, and we will make sure that all of the surfaces around the show, and this is done by the venue as well, they're all cleaned with um high grade disinfectants to make sure everything is nice and clean for everyone. So some things you should consider when you're thinking about your stand, um, how you intend to build and lay out your stand, how you display your products and interact with your customers. Be mindful that you should leave plenty of space where possible. Um, you don't want people to be on top of each other. Um, so please take that into account. Even if you're a shell scheme stand, think about where you're gonna place your furniture on your stand area. Um, could you show any of your products digitally or virtually instead of having lots and lots of things on your stand? Um, think about how you supply giveaways, which could be samples, brochures, promotional gifts. So think about whether or not people will want to take them themselves from your stand or if you want to do that in another way. Um, and try to avoid any activity that would create large queues or large volumes of people on your stand so that you're not creating crowded areas, because, again, that might still make some people feel uncomfortable. Um, and most importantly, we do ask that um, if you don't feel well, um, please do stay at home as much as we want you to come to the event. We need to think about the health and safety of everybody else as well. So please, if you do feel ill, please stay at home. Now, moving on to venue information, a future build is placed at the west end of Excel. We are located in hall modules S1 to 7, and the main entrance for us will be the west entrance. Now, that is Custom House DLR Station. You can also come through the east entrance. It will just take you longer to walk to the halls. Um, if you're coming by car, you will access the show through the middle um, of the boulevard along to the halls. Our event timetable. Um, so for build up, space only stands have access from Sunday at 10 a.m. until 10 p uh, 8 p.m. On Monday, space onlys will have access from 8 a.m. through to 8 p.m. And shell schemes will have access from 12 noon until 8 p.m. on the Monday. Our event open days are Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Day one and two, our open hours are 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. The halls will open at 8 a.m. So you will have a couple of hours each morning to dress your stand, to do any last minute checks. Um, and then, then on day three, on Thursday, our hours will be 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. Again, you'll have two hours in the morning and then we will close at 4 p.m. to go into breakdown for the show. Now, breakdown for shell schemes is from around five o'clock once all the visitors are clear of the hall and that will run until 8 p.m. 
For space only, breakdown will again start at around 5 p.m. and will run until 10 p.m. And then we have another window on Friday for space only stands, which is from 8 a.m. until 12 noon. But we must be clear of the halls by 12 noon on Friday the 4th. Now, stand packages. So anybody that is not space only will have even taken a shell scheme stand or you may have taken a digital impact stand. The shell scheme stand is a black shell build. If you attended in 2020, it will be the same shell scheme build. It will come with grey carpet and a name board. Um, the name board in the picture is just an example. That won't be the final name board, but we will be able to share that with you soon. You will also receive a twin 500 watt socket and two spotlights on the stand. A digital impact stand, very similar. Again, black shell, grey carpet. There will be a graphic on the rear of the wall. A member of my team will contact you to organize the artwork for that graphic. There will also be a screen mounted, a small counter, and again, a twin socket and stalls. For space only, if you've booked a space only, your stand will not come with any electrics, carpet or walling. It will just be the space on the floor and you need to organize um, anything extra. You can do that through my team and through our web shop. You can order power, you can order carpet, you can order furniture, you can order AV. You can. You may well have already spoken to either George or Ignacio on my team, but anything you need to order, you can go to them directly. Um, the overall height of your stand should not exceed four metres. Request to build over four metres will be considered, but it does deem your stand complex, so there are some additional fees that are involved. Full detail on uh, submitting your stand plans can be found in the online exhibitor manual. And this will be sent to our health and safety team, Op Squad, who will review your plans. And once happy, they will issue with a permission to build certificate. In order to get that permission to build certificate, you must pay your space only approval fee. And there is a link within the manual that will take you through to an online payment page. Once we have that payment, your stands will be reviewed and then we'll give you permission to build. The deadline to submit your plans is this uh, Friday, 28th of January. If you do need a little bit more time, then please do drop me an email or drop admin at opsquad.co.uk an email. Even if you're not ready to stay in your plans, please just let them know that you are working on it and then they can take that into account. And we'll move on to uh, additional requirements for, so for space only stands, do please make sure you've given your stand builder a copy of the technical floor plan and the exhibitor manual or the link to the exhibitor manual. Very, very important that you give them the technical floor plan because it allows them to see where the service ducts are on the floor. Pay particular attention to the space only guidelines, which again can be found in the online exhibitor manual via our website. If you go to the future build homepage under the exhibit menu, you will see a link to the exhibitor manual there. Um, the stand plan review fee, which is £160, £65 plus VAT, can be paid by an easy link in the manual. And as I mentioned, you need to try and submit your plans by this Friday. But if you're going to be delayed, please just drop us a note to let us know. Um, some other forms that you need to complete are your health and safety declaration, um, which is an online form in the manual. Risk assessment, again, is an online form within the manual and your grid plan. Very important that we get a grid plan for shell schemes and for space only because we need to know where you want to pay, place your power. Um, so please do make sure you submit all of those forms. They're all online links. The grid plan will uh, link to a downloadable PDF form that then you can just email back. The email is at the bottom of the form. All the forms are due at the end of this week. If you need a little bit more time, absolutely not a problem, but please try and get them to us as soon as possible to avoid any delays when arriving on site. And then we move on to My Easy Fares. Now, hopefully you're all familiar with My Easy Fares. You've all logged in. Now, there are many things that you can do within the portal, but this is where our web shop is located, which is where you can order um, additional extras for your stand. So when you go into my easy fares, you need to go to manage my stand. You then come into another manual, uh, another menu, sorry, click manage my stand again. 
And then on the bottom, there's an icon that says web shop. If you open that web shop, it will open up all of the different things that you can hire from us. Um, electricity, furniture, floor covering, stand fitting, AV. If there's something that you need that isn't on there, doesn't necessarily mean we can't get it for you. So please do drop myself or member of the team um, an email or call and we can look into that for you. And that's the end of the presentation from me. Um, some contacts for you. Like I say, you should hopefully have heard from George or Ignacio on my team. You may also have heard from Mia. So they have been calling around and emailing everybody. If you need anything at all after today, please feel free to drop one of us um, an email and we'd be happy to help you. And now we're just going to answer some questions. So let me just have a look here at the chat. So we've got one here. Where can we get an image of what our stand looks like? So if you go to the online exhibitor manual on the top menu bar, there is an option that says your stand. And on there, it will give you an example of a shell scheme stand. Now, we don't supply visuals for everybody's individual stand, but that will give you an idea of what it looks like. Let's move on to the next question. Yes, the deadline for grid plans is this Friday, but if you need another week, that's not a problem. Please just try and get it to us as, as soon as possible. The sooner we can have your grid plan, the sooner we can send it to our contractor and check that there aren't going to be any issues for you on site. Just go through the questions. Uh, are the, the furniture on the web shop is for hire. We don't sell furniture outright, so anything that you ordered via the web shop would be hired through our contractor and it would be delivered to your stand, so it would be there when you arrive on site. Um, if your shell scheme stand is over 12 square metres, yes, you would get four spotlights and two power sockets. They're twin 500 watt sockets, so they're enough to charge phones, laptops, PDQ machines if you're going to be taking payment for anything. Um, the email address, if you're... Stamp hands are going to be late is admin at opsquad.co.uk. You can also find that in the online exhibitor manual under health and safety and your stand. Uh, technical floor plan. There is a technical floor plan available within the online exhibitor manual, but if it's easier for you, you can email one of the email addresses at the end of the presentation that I shared with you. Either George or Ignacio would be happy to send you a technical floor plan. Um, space only does not include carpet. Um, space only is this space that's on the floor. If you want to order carpet, we can absolutely arrange that for you, but it isn't included in the cost of your stand. Uh, tables and chairs. Tables and chairs won't be placed in the exact location that you want them because we won't necessarily know where that will be, but any furniture that you order will be placed on your stand and then you can move it into the position that you would like. Um, so for shell scheme stands, mounting TV screens, um, the difficulty with doing that at the moment is a supply issue in getting um, the material to be able to attach it to the shell scheme panel. So we can supply you with a TV stand so you can still have it like that in the stand area, but we can't at the moment, unfortunately, um, mount it to the shell scheme wall. We are trying to find a workaround for that, but it's just causing um, a bit of difficulty at the moment. Uh, let me just go through. Yep, so the spotlights can be fitted to the ceiling grid or to the shell scheme wall. Um, so you can mark that on your grid plan, ideally where you'd like them. Um, on Sunday, the build time does start at 10 a.m. Um, if you are, if you feel that you're going to need more time, please drop me an email and um, I can look at that for you. But the official time is 10 a.m. The deadline for health and safety and risk assessments is this Friday, so please do submit those as soon as possible. Uh, Wi-Fi. Now, there is Wi-Fi within the venue, free Wi-Fi for everyone. The problem with Wi-Fi in any venue is the more people that use it, the busier it gets, and sometimes it can drop off. My advice to you and what I do when I'm on site is use your 4G or 5G, even if you have it, and pair from your phone. And nowadays, that is usually quicker than the venue Wi-Fi. Um, is there a way we can have a... 
is there a way we can have our shell scheme box design independent? So if you've got a specific design question, one that's has come up here, I'm not really sure what it is, but if you've got a specific question about your shell design, please drop me an email and then we can talk about that separately because it might need a little bit more detailed conversation. Um, we do have a graphics um, supplier that we use and you can order graphics through our web shop. If the graphics that you are looking for to have installed on your stand are there, then please contact either George or Ignacio and they can look into other options for you. Um, we do have catering partners uh, at the event. There are details in the exhibitor manual. If you go to suppliers, um, which is a tab at the top menu on the right hand side, there's a link to the Excel catering team and you can order hospitality for your stand um, directly with the venue. Let me see if we've had any more questions that have come in. You can use extension leads. So we don't hire extension leads. Um, you can use them, but you must be very careful not to overload an extension lead. If you plug too much into an extension lead, you will blow the power on every stand on your block. So you can bring them, but please do not overload them and please do not daisy chain them. And by daisy chain, that means plugging one extension lead into another. So you have more and more sockets. Um, the deadline for graphics is this Friday. So please do contact a member of the team if you would like to order graphics. One thing to also note is that the early bird rates end this Friday. So if you want to take advantage of the lower rates on our web shop, then please do hire anything that you need by the end of this week. If you would like to install your own graphics to shell scheme panels, yes, you can absolutely do that. The best way to do that is with high tack double sided tape or Velcro. You would need to organize that and bring that with your graphics. Grid plan is accessed through the exhibitor manual. If you go to the checklist section, the very last option in the list of forms is the grid plan and it will download a PDF form for you to, to fill out. And then you need to email it back to the Operations UK email address, which is at the end of the form. Um, you can order, so you're, if you're a shell scheme, your stand will come with a 500 watt twin socket. If you need anything over and above that, you would need to order that through the web shop. So like I say, a 500 watt socket will power a TV, a PDQ machine, a laptop, it will charge a phone. But once you start to have something like a fridge, so anything that needs to cool or heat, it will require more power and you need to order that through the web shop. For loading and unloading, you'll be accessed via the South Lorry Way. You will report to the traffic office when you arrive at Excel and they will, they will direct you down to the right place. They will likely ask you for your stand number so that they can direct you to the nearest lorry door to your stand. It is going, it's likely to be very busy. So please be patient. We get everybody down to the lorry way as quickly as we can. But depending on what time of day you arrive, you may have to wait, but we will endeavor to get everybody in as fast as we can. Um, everybody needs to supply a grid plan, regardless of how big or small your stand is. If you don't supply a grid plan, um, especially if you're shell scheme and you receive socket and spotlights, we will put them or our electricians will put them where they see fit. If you need those to be moved on site because you did not submit a grid plan, then you could face a long wait um, because they will have to deal with that once they've installed everything else. So please, please, please submit your grid plan in advance. Um, placement of a screen on your stand really depends on what else you're going to do on the stand. So think about if you're displaying any products, um, have you got any display cases that you're going to have? Have you got any shelving? Have you got any tables or chairs? Um, think about where you're going to have your socket and then you can decide the best place for your screen. Um, if you want to have a screen, if you've got a twin socket as part of your package, if all you're going to use that twin socket for is a screen, then that will be enough. If you're going to have more than a screen on your stand, then you may need to order additional power. Um, so on your grid plan, you don't need to put your furniture on the grid plan. It's for um, power. 
and if you have any additional stand fitting items. So if you have asked to have any stall, uh, shelves installed on your shell scheme, you would put those on your grid plan, you would put your lights and you would put your socket. Your furniture will be placed within your stand footprint and then you would need to move that with your team into where you would like it placed. And the exhibitor manual can be found on the Future Build main website under the exhibit menu. I think it's the very last option in the list and that will open into a new window for you. Um, oh, if you wanted one and a half kilowatt power supply, you would need a one kilowatt socket and a 500 watt socket. There isn't actually a supply that is 1.5 kilowatts. You would need a one kilowatt socket and a 500 watt socket. You'd have to order those two things separately on the shop. The socket that you receive as part of your shell scheme package is a twin 500 watt socket. Um, it's hard to say which times are the best to drop off by car because we really don't know what time people are going to turn up throughout the day. Um, I wish I could tell you um, the perfect time to come, but unfortunately I can't um, advise on that. So with rigging, you just need to make sure that you flag it in your space only stand plans. This will be reviewed by a health and safety team. And then please make sure you contact the rigging team at Excel as soon as possible towards that with them. Their contact details can be found in the supplier section of the exhibitor manual. Um, and like I say, make sure it's within your stand plans so that our health and safety team can um, check it over, make sure it complies with our rules and regulations. Um, ceiling grids. So you can, if you're, if this question is asking, can you remove your ceiling grid? That is possible in in some setups. It really depends what else is going on on the block of stands where your shell scheme is. Ceiling grids are often installed for um, structural and stability purposes. So if you want to change your shell scheme in any way, there is a shell requests form in the same place as the health and safety, risk assessment and grid plan forms. If you fill out that form, then a member of my team will contact you to talk through your request. Uh, I think that's the last question, but I don't know if we're just gonna get some more come in. Um, so space only stands can set up, I don't know if I can go back on the slides, but space only stands set up starts on the Sunday at 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. And then space only access again on the Monday from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. So 10 to 8 on Sunday, 8 to 8 on Monday for build up. Uh, the grid plan is not within your My Easy Fares account. The grid plan is within the online exhibitor manual accessed via the website. Go to the exhibit tab on the Future Build homepage and you can click to go through to the exhibitor manual and then choose the checklist option across the top menu bar of the exhibitor manual. Um, parking recommendations. There is parking at Excel for thousands and thousands of cars. So um, you can park underneath the venue. Um, so when you, you can pre-book that in advance via the Excel website, it doesn't come through us, but there's ample parking for many, many cars. Um, and yeah, re, um, selling from your, from your stand, if it's a product that you're selling on your stand, then yes, if you need to take payment for anything, you need to make sure you've organized a PDQ machine or some sort of payment system. We won't have that available on site. Um, and make sure that you've got power to charge uh, the payment system. There will be a logistics company on site. We work with GS Logistics. They will be our freight partner. Um, if you need help unloading from your vehicle, you will need to speak directly to GS Logistics and arrange that um, for them. Parking, if you go to the exhibitor manual, um, there is a section in there that details about lorry parking and all vehicles. Um, so please visit that. If you can't find what you need there, then drop me an email. But everything that you need should be in that section. Have we got any more questions coming in? Hopefully that answered everything. 
Um, if you think of anything else, like I say, do drop George or Ignacio or myself and Ina email and we will endeavour to answer your questions as quickly as we can. And we look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Mark Benoit. I'm the sales director here at Future Build. Firstly, and um, most importantly, I want to thank everybody for their support for this year. We, at the team, worked super, super hard to make sure this is a great event. So um, let's all have some fun. <clears throat> so, firstly, I want to say to you, um, we're here to support all the exhibitors to make sure that you have a good event. So please use all the staff that are walking around. I will be available on the business point which you can find at the back of the hall. And you also have their read book is walking around throughout the day. Um, please use the business point for teas and coffees, but also come and see what we've got planned for 2023. Has we got a lot planned? We've got read bookers and also we have um, a lot of really interesting things planned. On day two of the show, we have a networking event for all our exhibitors. So please join us from five o'clock for, for some drinks and some fun and sorry about that. Um, so uh, yeah, please join us from five o'clock on day two on the Tuesday. Uh, if you have any questions for me, please um, ask now. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you at the show. Any questions? Okay, I'll pass on to Hettel, who can take the floor from here. Thank you. And um, that kind of brings us to the end of our uh, webinar today. Thank you so much for joining us and for all your questions. We hope that we managed to answer quite a few of them for you. Um, but I will download all the questions after the webinar um, and distribute them to the relevant people. So if anything wasn't answered, we'll make sure we get back to you and answer them. Um, I think something that uh, I was asked about was uh, VIPs. So VIPs, let me just double check for you. VIPs get access to the VIP lounge where they'll be able to network with other net zero pioneers um, and influential people, including um, industry leaders and speakers as well. So they'll get access to that for three days of the show. They also get light refreshments there as well. Um, we'll be running a podcast from either the VIP lounge or near the VIP lounge. Um, our future X podcast. So they'll, they'll be able to see that also. Um, you'll be invited to um, drinks after the big innovation pitch. Um, and also you'll get a preview with highlights from Dr. Oliver Jones on what to go and see at the show. Um, but most importantly, you will be, well, if they're VIPs, they will be part of our Future X community. So all year round, we'll be, um, you know, doing our podcast with Martin Hearn, our director, um, and Dr. Oliver Jones, and you'll get first um, look and first access to those. But we'll have some little mini events as well running along the year. So you will also be invited to them as well. So definitely, it's, it's definitely worth thinking about who your VIP should be and inviting them to attend as a VIP. Um, the other thing I wanted to go back and touch on was um, Visit Connect and readers. So I know a lot of you had questions about the readers and, the, and Visit Connect. So the, read, the readers are really there for visitors. So it, it's so that you can get exposure uh, more exposure for your brand, your products. So the readers are there so that visitors can um, find out more information about your company. So even if you don't get to speak to somebody, um, you know, they can, they will still be able to get some information about your company. And it's the information that you decide that you want to give them. But also if you don't want to download um, the scanning app on your phone, or if you don't have it to hand, you can use the reader as well. So, the re you know, you can you, you'll get the same information on the reader that you get on the scanning app. So
So you can get them to tap their badge on the reader um, and you'll get all that information. The only benefit, well, not the only, but one of the benefits of having the scanning app is that you can also make notes. So whilst you're speaking to somebody, um, you can make notes on there as well. If you have any more questions about the readers and, and Visit Connect, you know, just get in touch with myself or Chloe and we'll be more than happy to explain it to you. Um, do we have to pay for VIP badges? No, nope, you don't have to pay for VIP badges. VIPs are free um, to attend. They will have a VIP badge, which will allow them access into the VIP lounge. Um, if you have any more questions, yeah, please uh, send them my way. This uh, webinar will be available um, to watch on replay. So um, you will definitely be able to go back and have a look at information that we've spoken about today. Um, I understand that we've uh, told you quite a lot of things today. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, keep this and you can have a look and also share it with um, other people in your team or um, your um, stand personnel, people that are gonna be there on the day. Is the reader physically on the stand? Do we need a table for it? Um, so the reader will be on a board um, so yeah, it would be good if you had a table so that you can stand the board on the table and the reader will be attached to the board. Um, any more questions? Where do we submit our VIPs? So if you have a list of VIPs, please send it to myself and Chloe to vet and then we will invite them on your behalf. What we will do is we'll put together um, a HTML email for you we'll send it over to you so that you can um, approve that you're happy with it and then we'll send it out to your vip list using your track link so that you can still see who's registering um, from your promotion could we use double-sided velcro to attach readers yeah you can use double-sided velcro to attach readers will registered colleagues have access to the vip area um, only those registered as VIPs will have access to the VIP area. If there's anybody in particular, like your CEO, that hasn't got um, a VIP badge, let me know, and um, you know I can I can make sure that we upgrade them to a VIP so they can meet your clients in the VIP lounge. Great. Well, I think we've answered most of the questions. Thank you again for um, joining us. Look out for updates from myself and Chloe. Uh, we'll be sending them every week now uh, with just some key deadlines for you guys. Um, and also, um, don't forget to enter for the big innovation pitch by Friday. Thank you. Bye-bye.